On today's episode of The Glue Guys, we're going to play a new game called Coffee Road Trip oh, man. or Leave on Red. It's, it felt, felt like a good idea at the pre-production meeting. Coffee. <laughs> it's like MFK, that, but we, we felt just... that that was crass. We felt we got... Yeah, Brian and I are... Uh, we're part of the New York Times now, so we can't just, you know, we can't play that game. So it's coffee, road trip, and leave on red. Coming up, right? coming up next on the Good Guys. Welcome back to the Good Guys. This is Mike Arisolo, bro. Hello. Check us out on Twitter at BK Glue Guys, NetsDaily.com, The Athletic. Get yourself behind the paywall at mm. TheAthletic.com. Slash glue Guys, a subsidiary at the New York Times. Ryan. Michael. We're back. Hey. You watching those finals games, bud? You catch? I did stay up. Yeah, they're good. Yeah. It's good. Basketball's good. Hey, hot take. I like basketball. Whoa. It's fun to watch basketball. Breaking news. Um, I will say this. I've watched the, these finals. And I both simultaneously feel better about the Nets' future and worse. Yeah. Interesting. Go on. I'm I'm interested to hear more. If the Nets get some level of cohesion, if okay, there's a lot of things that need to happen. Okay. If Kyrie Irving comes back to, to the team, if okay. Ben Simmons plays basketball, uh-huh. and if they have a level of cohesion, the Nets are still the most talented team in the NBA. Okay. Okay. You hear that? I'm hearing it. Breaking, more breaking news. Um, but the level of cohesion that I see from the <clears> Celtics <throat> and really from the Warriors is like, can the Nets even attain that level of? Is uh, this is this season cohesion? a a referendum on star or on bedazzled mercenaries v cohesive multi year partners in crime? It's like Endgame yeah. versus you know. What's some movie that was just like Avatar? Yeah. Right? right? Endgame was built up over 20 Marvel movies, and it was this epic, and it made X amount of dollars. Avatar, hey, one off, won the championship. But Didn't it, need to build anything. It had Giovanna Rubisi, and that's the real... <laughs> that's, that's the secret that's, sauce. That's the secret sauce in, in my every, world. Uh, have you seen Giovanni Rubisi in uh, the the TV show The Offer? I so I watched the first episode of that, which is what I also watched the first fifteen minutes of Obi Wan. Mike, you'll be pleased to know. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> All right, <laughs> but not actually, and I'm not because I'm not going to continue. That. I was thinking about continuing. I'll, I'll put yeah. it that way. But that's as, because I was so effusive in praise, and then you're like, yeah, I got to see what this guy's what he's on, <laughs> what he's on about. Um, um, so yeah, yeah. So I do. I you know I watch these. Uh, finals and it's like this Warriors team there are times when Steph Curry is the only one that could and Steph Curry and Andrew Wiggins are the only two guys who can score on the team mm-hmm. on any consistent level and then there are times when I look at the Celtics and not even Jason Tatum can score on a consistent level but and where was that I, in the first round like I could use a little of that Jason Tatum. Yeah, well, yeah well you know where it was yeah he was playing offense against the Nets defense right ultimately that's, and that's that the works. problem because because if you look at the Warriors, I mean, this isn't revolutionary to say, but like beyond Steph Curry, there are times when they have four plus defenders on the floor, mm-hmm. right? You know, Draymond, Clay, Gary Payton, two, like T two GP two, mm-hmm. um, Kavon Looney, who maybe is the career path that Nick Claxton should be aiming for. Interesting. Okay. Um, it, so it's like, okay, can the Nets? Can the Nets form that into one season? I think they they can form it enough if everyone's healthy, there's no sabbaticals, mm. someone plays basketball who hasn't played basketball in a year. Yeah. Another guy decides to maintain to be on the court who when he has yet to maintain to be on the court for any consistency for many, many years so far in his career. It's a lot to ask, but that's why I feel both good and bad. You know what's really demented, too, is that we, like, there was a serious conversation, not even just at, like, the trade, around the trade, uh, the time of the trade, when the Ben Simmons thing went down, whether that was going to be enough time for us to form that cohesiveness. But it was literally game four (laughs) of of a first-round potential sweep. We're like, is this enough time? Do we have enough time to put it all together? (laughs) It, uh, In hindsight, you know, looking at at the cohesiveness on display, it seems seems unlikely, unlikelier than it did then, Mike. It's why a lot of guys like Stephen A. Smith and other commentators have certain like rules they live by and they will yell their way 
in any scenario regarding those rules. Meaning, like, I think we should live by the rule if we're going to have a Mana Set Festo mm -hmm. about being an NBA fan. If one of your best players hasn't played the entire year and you're banking on him for yeah. a do or die game, maybe don't. Like, yeah. maybe don't bank on him. I think that's just a rule we should follow. In the, and the in a tracks historically, it's like Michael Jordan in, I want to say, 95, 96, 95, sure. you know. And he came back. Yeah, came back and, and they tried to um, give, you know, give it a run. And that was their, that was their, uh, anyways, you all know. Speaking of We've, runs. Yeah. We're going to play a game today. The very exciting game. It's going to be all about the Nets and through the Nets prism. It's a version of MFK, Mary, Fudge, kindly end their life. <laughs> nice. <laughs> well done. Um, what's the kindest way anyone's life has been ended? Um, One who flew the cuckoo's nest. What a delightful way to go out. Well, how does that happen? The pillow scene. Oh, you just a pillow over the face. <laughs> Is that the way? <laughs> Just because like, you think his pill pillows are soft, and yeah. but it's really the suffocation that's that I think is the oh, that's it's not the hardness <laughs> of the like, object. If, you, if I get strangled with a pair of mittens, that's a nice way to go. <laughs> are they cashmere? Or yeah. What are we talking about here? Yeah. All right, so we're our version of MFK. Brian came up with this coffee. Road trip, leave on red. Brian, do you want to explain what those mean? So I think, I mean, it's, I hope it's self-explanatory, but in case it's not. It's not. Uh, <laughs> like, if you're, um, so there's three stages of a relationship, right? Um, one is, like, you get co you're getting coffees. Um, this isn't, these aren't the only three stages of a relationship. This, <laughs> this these, are, these, <laughs> these are approximations that are trying to map onto the MFK model here. But so, uh, for, obviously, for the M, that's the road trip, right? You're going on a friend's road trip. You better like that person, because... Yeah. Um, you're, you're going to, those picadillos, those picadillos yeah. are going to be on display. The farts, the, that fat, you know, the, those food deserts, um, Their music. they wreck, they wreck, wreak They're havoc. Snoring. Um, yes. and then, yeah, the music, don't get me started. And then, you know, an, an F version of that is great. Just grabbing a coffee. You know, we're just at the coffee phase of this thing. We're just, we don't know each other. Well, I like you enough to, to get this coffee, you know, date on the, on the calendar. We'll probably cancel on each other a couple times. That's fine. We'll, we'll get there. Um, and everyone yeah. drinks coffee every day. It's just do you decide to do it with that person that day? Right, right, exactly. You know. um, and then left on red is our version of, of kindly ending their life. Uh, and obviously that's when you stop <laughs> messaging them and ghost them because they're dead to you in the digital universe, in the digital space. I'm looking at you, Amy. No. What? <laughs> Who's Amy? Just gonna, is this awesome. another one of your... That, I was. By the way, I went back and watched the... Uh, the principal, whatever, Doctor Patillo, <laughs> the Doctor Patillo clip. You, uh, what, what I think honestly, I watched it like fifteen times. I liked it. So, <laughs> I enjoyed it so much. What? What was your analysis? Well, it's What's just like you know, there's it? so many layers to the Mike Smelts onion, and this was. I felt like that was like the sure. a big you know that first big chunk after the skin is like okay, now we're getting somewhere. Finally, after all these years, <laughs> that was you finally got <laughs> yeah. post now the epidermal. Now. What is it? The <laughs> Epidermis, yeah. Layer. Now we're getting somewhere. Okay. Well, there's a lot more, a lot more to come. <laughs> that's that's how it needs work. Honestly, though, <laughs> I've talked about like my parents' divorce so many times. I think that's nah. Pretty, that's that's a that's, core. That's top level. That's that's uh, right there. Yeah. <laughs> that's the caramel cover on top of the yeah. apple. Like, there's so much more to. Yeah, be that's added. the sticker on the onion. Right there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Coffee road trip. Leave on red. Uh, we basically try to choose three a troika. All in the same category involving the Nets. Let's start it off. Um, this is what I'm going to deem as the the mid tier net options. Mm. Okay, so <laughs> Bruce Brown is a free agent. Nick Claxton is a free agent. They're going to cost a certain amount of money. Well, we don't have another third tier free agent on that level. So I put in Joe Harris trade because if you trade Joe Harris, okay. You are oh, interesting. You are, so this leaves a little bit of an open ended situation. Like, is it who you comes are back? We're going to create the room, okay. to maybe oh, keep oh, Bruce and Nick. Okay. So would you give up? I know this is not, not very MFK <laughs> coffee road trip. Leave on red, but like in a scenario where basically you're trading Joe Harris to a team. I mean, you get to keep. I can Nick almost Clax hear Brown. you putting on those cashmere mittens right now and strangling Joe Harris. My, that's, <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's that's where my brain goes. Okay. So coffee, road trip, leave on red. This is going to be confusing, but just you know, follow along with us. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to start off coffee, Nick Claxton, road trip, Bruce Brown, and leave on red, Joe Harris trade. So what that means is 
I guess I don't support a Joe. I don't love the idea of a tro- Joe Harris trade. Wow, this is like really. I'm trying to like actually follow this. So it's the yeah. idea this of is a about Joe the Harris. The hardest trade. one that yeah. we're doing. Okay, this is a mind mind bender. Like if you love the idea of a Joe Harris trade, that's a road trip. If yeah. you're okay with the idea, it's a coffee. And if you hate the idea, it's a leaf on red. <laughs> I hate the idea of a Joe Harris trade. I like what did I say, Nick Claxton, and I love Bruce Brown. Mm. But here's what I think. I think Bruce Brown is not going to be on this team next year. They seem to be more outwardly like we're keeping Nick Claxton. Yeah, they've they've been posting about him quite a bit. And Bruce Brown's been at Liberty Games. Liberty Games are now the sort of the meeting hub of Nets. Yes. We've buried the lead, by the way, on the show. Because did you see Nick Claxton got a haircut? (gasps) He, He shaved it all off, Mike. What? I know. They just they just posted haircut. a random like a you know him working out thing uh, from the Brooklyn Nets account. I saw it on I think I saw it on Facebook because I am in my mid thirties and uh, <laughs> they just didn't make any mention at all of of his um, no of way. the fact that he cut his hair off. That's not on Nets Daily. Where is that? I know that, it should have been that everywhere. Is like essential information. Um, so does that change things for you, Mike? I still have my coffee. Okay. What about you? Who do you who do you heart the most? Who do you like the most? Then who do you? Well, it would help me for context to know a little sure. bit where your head is at with what we could get back in a Joe Harris trade. Like, is there any? I know that that's like a whole two episodes in August, <laughs> but <laughs> I don't want to. So I don't want to trample on that. But um, that would help me to think about this. I think. Okay, let's live in a scenario where the the Joe Harris trade is to clear money and to get future assets. Like for a first, a future first. Okay. So that you can re-sign Nick Claxton and Bruce Brown, and then the Nets are going to have like a more of a war chest to do a much bigger move than just trading Joe Harris. Just in this scenario, because in reality, a Joe Harris trade, you make that deal for a pretty high level, like like a fourth or fifth starter, but which is what Joe is. But you say we have Patty Mills and Seth Curry. We, we're not desperate for shooting, hmm. but what we could really use is like a Chauncey Billups like point guard. Mm-hmm. I don't know who that is. Like, but this team could, what, at what era of Chauncey Billups? De- like, uh, like, well, I guess the, like, the Detroit we're Pistons. talking about Nuggets. No. Pistons era of Chauncey Billups? That's like a yeah. really good player. Yeah, it's a really good player. But yeah. okay, I, I guess Pistons, or I guess Nuggets era more because yeah. that's like too good for Joe Harris. Right. Like, because I, I, I know this team needs a lot. Like, it could use more wing depth. It could use like Andrew Wiggins, like if they could get Andrew Wiggins, yeah, which they won't. That'd be phenomenal. But I, I keep going back to this. I don't know if Ben Simmons is going to play, and Kyrie is not a point guard. Mm-hmm. He just isn't. Like as great as he is, they really need someone who's a connective tissue type guy. Could be Ben Simmons, but and so I don't know. I should know this, but how many years are left on the Joe Harris agreement? I think just one more. I year. think it's one year. Yeah. Hmm. And and there's a lot of teams that could want him. To me, he's also a guy who's appealing to teams that are um, like like a Detroit Pistons, Orlando Magic team, where they know they're not that good, but Joe Harris seems to be such a good guy that he's like that veteran, calming, like nice presence on your team. Yeah. And you know, like the value of his three point shot, and that's just going to travel to any kind of roster. So for the Nets, I think what they maybe do is like, is it a real point guard or is it like a real three and D guy? Yeah. Who's not as much of a three, but he's a, he's a D, a big old D. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> You're really <laughs> contemplating. This. I am. Well, because I'm thinking about. Um, I, well, this I'm was think, the worst selection for me to start off. This is because it was a t- odd. <laughs> it's an odd one, and I'm trying to. I mean, every time I start thinking about, it, I'm like, oh wait, that's not actually how the, this is supposed to be framed, because like I actually don't. Like I'm open to a Joe Harris trade, pretty, pretty fundamentally. Just so. So you, what do you want to have a latte with it, or do you want to <laughs> well, sit the, in a car with the, the abstract notion of a Joe Harris and then, trade? And then here's the. <laughs> and then here's the situation, though. It's like, um, you know, going back to the cohesiveness conversation. You know, it feels like the the cohesiveness in Cambrio, the cohesive yeah. Cambrio. Um, that like is Joe Harris part of this era of, of cohesiveness, or is he ah. a a remnant um, of the uh, of the previous version of that, where there actually was cohesiveness? Um, and then that way, like, could he 
could he bring is he is he like a vestige of that and, and in that way like a uh, a bad reminder of what once was and we could clear him <laughs> because of that i'm just thinking about it yeah. purely from now, the, is he, yeah. is he the is he the robert gates going from the bush administration to mm-hmm. the obama administration mm-hmm. or is he in fact sort of like a a leftover trump appointee right. in a new biden administration where like they're trying to get rid of that person like yeah. the who's the guy who runs the postmaster general sure like, <laughs> yeah they don't really like that guy. Yeah, yeah. So, is he the postmaster <laughs> right. general or Robert Gates? Do you want and do you want to be in a car with the postmaster general? This is getting very Did abstract. We just yeah, we made a bad idea worse. Yeah, with so many <laughs> but, more layers. But then I think we can bring it around. I'm pretty happy with it. Okay. So, so and then here's my thing with the Bruce Brown. It's like, is sure. it going to be like? Oh. Don't, I'm going to break up with you before you break up with me sort of situation. You know what I mean? Because I think you're right in some sense. that. But he's been like in and around the, the team like way more than Joe Harris has, at least. I'll, maybe. I don't know. I don't follow the social. Well, Joe's out walking in the snow grabbing coffee. Yeah, all he's over still, the place, he's just like ch- chasing the, you know, s- the storm. He's just finding wherever it's snowiest and, and <laughs> <laughs> going on. He's Jake Gyllenhaal the day after tomorrow. And wearing, and wearing uh, bowling shoes on a hike. You know, this guy. Because they have low traction, like, um, and he, it was and very he could, quick. And that he, was a very quick <laughs> low traction yeah, shoe joke. Yeah, thanks. Maybe one of the I've quickest. Been, I've been thinking about that for a while. Um, so, anyways, we're really scrutinizing this one, <laughs> but but well, I'm I'm more open to the, the Joe thing. Harris Most train. Most people want to hear yeah. you say whether you like Bruce Brown or Nick Claxton more. They, you, ultimately, that's that's what, that's what people the fans want to hear. Of the show that's what hear. they're they're clamoring for. So, do you want to have coffee with Bruce, or do you want to go on a road trip with Bruce? Vice oh versa. God, I love Bruce Brown. I love him. Thank you. This is hard for me, but also there's like you know there's a lot of love for Nick Claxton, uh, I love. you know, and and he's got like the ceiling. He's got a a the, the his implementation as a basketball player. It's a lot more seamless. Fits into a lot more rotations. You know, it's a anchoring position that could be very, you know, a, a starter on on many many teams. Whereas Bruce Brown might have. You know, unique fits here and there that work, and at times it doesn't. Um, on this team, you know, it's hard to say. Like, Bruce Brown wasn't the linchpin, weirdly, of our offense when, you know, Kyrie and KD couldn't figure out a way to communicate to with their bodies. Their from their butts yeah. from um, their hands. God, Mike, you really well, started off with, that, a, two with a banger. Let's live in a world that Ben Simmons plays basketball. Mm. Does Ben Simmons That's and Bruce a, Brown work on the floor – together that does feel a little redundant for that amount of x factorness that's a whole lot of x factor on one <laughs> that's a lot of x factor not a lot of y <laughs> yeah yeah so you know you need to, some grounding a lot there. of x chromosomes you need some y <laughs> okay um so okay I, but here's another factor do you know what bruce brown shot on like three point percentage you know by the end of the year by the end of the year uh i mean starting like 40 percent yeah he like had a really good end of the year i mean yes and yeah and if you trace back to what he was in Detroit, he was a better three-point shooter than he was two seasons ago in Brooklyn. And then this past year, he really only took open threes, and he started hitting them. Watching this finals, going back to this finals, mm. the thing I value more, and like I think a lot of people do in the NBA, flexible wings who can defend. And while Bruce is a little short on the scale of being that sort of the stretchy wing, the auto Porter, Andrew Wiggins, Jason, Jalen, all that mm-hmm. stuff. He is still big ish enough that he can guard, you know, one twos and a three at a time. And in you many know? ways, part of his, like uh, what makes him a unique defender <clears throat> is the deception in seeming small, but having an incredible wingspan and being able to sneak up on people and, and do crafty things that way. It's almost because of his shortness that he's uh, a crafty and deft defender. Man, so, you've really I've, I'm in a bind here. I agree with you that Nick Claxton's ceiling is higher. Like I think the the uh, you know like I really I joke about Kevon Looney. I don't know if people remember Kevon Looney was like a small forward prospect at UCLA. Like when he was coming out of high school, he he was in that mold of a lot of like the Kevin Garnett imitators, mm. like the tall, athletic kind of. At that time, he was way skinnier, like the lanky dude, and then. The Warriors drafted him, and he gained weight, and he became more and more of a center. And now he's like the a uh, traditional center. Yeah. Now Nick Claxton, everybody's different. You know, everyone's different here. Uh, Nick Claxton, though, at Georgia, as we like to joke about, was the primary ball handler for that team, 
and he goes to Brooklyn and he starts shifting into the Clint Capella like center. Nick Claxton ceiling could be a guy who is your starting center who is very athletic, one of the best switching centers in the NBA, who has like a little there's there's remnants of that ball handling maestro that he was at Georgia. But do I think he's going to get there? Mm. I think it's much more likely that Bruce Brown's three is good enough. And if he's good enough from three, then that's a very valuable piece to yeah. have around any group of stars. This is also like the time of year where people are passing around. <clears throat> I forget who it was. I should have this handy, but I don't. Anyways, like passed around some clips of Nick Claxton in Summer League when he was uh, t- took his trips down. And they're don't, like, look, don't he's, pass he's got like 35, 15, and 10. And it's like, guys, this is... Did we learn nothing from Toko Shingalia? <laughs> Did we learn nothing <laughs> from from, uh, from Toko to- Shingalia died if, if to- for our sins? If, if Toko Toko went down to the G League and was like like LeBron James stacked on top of Kareem Abdul Jabbar, that was like, <laughs> so like if, you put up like forty, twenty, and twenty every night, um, and we all know how that worked out. So, anyways, um, but it's really hard because you took the, the positive route, Mike, and I don't want to just copy you, but it is like like being like anti trading Joe Harris and loving both of those other guys to a certain extent is is the is like the nice thing. I'll just do that because I don't want to okay. you know I don't want to stir the pot. But wait, who are you gonna go on a road trip with? You have to say. It. Oh, okay. Um, I'm, I'm road tri- you know, and this is just more of like a personality thing, dude. Bruce Brown's a, a party. I can tell. He's he, <laughs> the guy likes a party. We, we've interviewed him. He those seems... are those are roadies. We're having road beers. I can feel it. You know. And I feel like Nick Claxton's just in his phone a lot. He's in his phone. He's just, he's like, like just getting hammered in the DMs. Just like <laughs> everybody's coming out of the woodwork, and he's getting, those de- tending to his DMs has got to be a full time job. He has the earbuds in or the yeah. AirPods, and he's just sort of listening. These are judgments based music. on nothing. You know, we don't really know. Just it. him being young. <laughs> yeah. you know, just yeah. assuming he has no yeah. social skills. Yeah. And so Bruce Brown, though, is like Bruce Brown is a little like one of the guys from um, what's the Swayze movie r- rips out a guy's throat. Roadhouse. What are you talking roadhouse. About? Yeah. Like, I feel like I could t- take Bruce Brown to a roadhouse style bar. Yeah. And I'd feel good. And we can get we could rip some throats together. You but know? Nick Clax like, and I'm not taking to a roadhouse bar. You know, he's too pretty. Yeah, I go to Milan with him. And frankly, he's too tall. Let's just be honest. He's going to be a spectacle. Yeah, a you know, Bruce Brown's 6'4". You see those you see those guys all the time. All right, let's do this. Now, we'll take a quick break. We'll come back with five more oh my of these coffee road oh trip. We'll, leave on. we'll go quicker <laughs> this wow. next few rounds. And we're back. Brian, the game is coffee road trip. Leave on red. The next group are the crusty veterans. Mm. One has a player option, but let's all assume that they may leave this team. Okay. LaMarcus Aldridge, Blake Griffin, Patty Mills. Who do you leave on red? Who do you go on a road trip with? And who do you have a delicious cup of a Java with? You know, I feel... So I put, like, Patty and LaMarcus Aldridge in a similar bucket. Uh, so, like, let's just cut to the chase. Um, I, I like... I love Blake Griffin, the person, but the degree to which he was not useful to us in the playoffs... And I don't know the fault of this. He had won a couple of good good moments. He had won, like, what was he it? He took game, a charge, Brian! He, game Look three. What Blake Griffin's doing out here! And, and, I, and, you know, it's a tough spot to be in when, like, you know, you do only get your, like, eight minutes to shine, and you do shine in them. And, like, it's so that's a... Uh, yeah. That's a hard, um, hard spot to be in. But like, just putting into context his entire the entirety of that season, where you know, I, I was looking at it's funny. I was looking at some old clips of Blake Griffin and just how he used to get buckets, like what what he was doing, and it was mostly um, through like kind of face face up dribble drives against uh, slower, you know, big men defenders. That was how he did, it. and <clears throat> nothing about what I've seen in the last <clears throat> year and a half suggests to me that that part of his game is the, the, still there and or ever coming back. And I don't, if, yes. and if not for that, I don't know. I, I don't trust him from the three point line that much on a consistent basis. I don't want him to be in a position where I'm relying on Blake Griffin, whereas I would be okay uh, relying on either of those two other guys. So for that reason, I'm going to leave Blake on red, which is a crime against humanity because he doesn't deserve that, but that's where I am. So I'm just going to start. That's there. what you're doing though. That's what I'm you gonna, are doing. That. Um, I think I want to this go. This is interesting to me. I yeah. think I want to go the distance with with Patty. I mean, obviously for yeah. personality reasons, but also um, in the basketball way that we're kind of alluding to. Uh, obviously, he's like the most in his prime of those guys to an extent. He still very much does what he had been doing his entire career. But like again, he's like kind of a backup, so it's hard to 
you know, put LaMarcus, a perennial starter, in the same position as Patty in that regard. Um, but most of what Patty does, he still does at a high level throughout his entire career. Not a lot of fall off. The only thing that we've done to him, that poor guy, is ran his ran his bones <laughs> into dust the last season. So uh, I don't. He's I don't, a horse <clears throat> in Zelda. Yeah, he's just going all over that map, you know. <laughs> Just uh, like wow. get that guy, get the guy some water. Yeah, yeah. Get this man a carrot. Um, and and then yeah, a little espresso with the uh, Lamarcus. He's still got a a year left in him or two. And you know, I was. Do you think he'll be back? Uh, I I don't. I don't. I think I think. Do you, well, do you think I, he retires? Is the question. I wonder. I think. I think there's another year <laughs> left in him. Um. Like the Spurs would be the perfect situation for him to go back to, but they're not good enough. Like, what does he want? He probably wants to try to win a win a ring. So, like, does he go to Milwaukee and has just be, kind of become? Because like that's a team that has so many bigs that he can only he'll only fit in the moments when he really needs to. Yeah, and that's kind of like the perfect spot. I mean, they already have like Bobby Portis, which is basically what Lamarcus is now, just like way more spry. And, and Brooke Lopez too. And Brooke, yeah. yeah. So. Um, I don't think he'll be back because of what, um, oh, sorry. So loud. That Slack message. Um, what Sean Mark said about how they kind of have to get back to what the culture that they had. Again, I look at the finals, Gary Payton, the second, he was on the wizards out there to be had by anyone after the wizards cut him. Uh, uh, Warriors picked him up and now he's playing crunch time with the dubs. Mm -hmm. Um, you kind of look like obviously the Gabe Vincent, Max Struces of the world. Mm -hmm. There are so many of these contending teams that have really nailed. Um, we get some ooh. some emergencies. Yeah, let me just. I'll just turn off. <clears throat> Who those teams have nailed the G League picks and predating those teams was Sean Marks with you know Spencer Dinwiddie yeah. and Joe Harris, like end of the bench, blah blah blah, blah guys. So. I think that they're going to go away from the Lamarcus Blake types and go closer to, hey, let's leave our roster a little bit flexible so we can grab whatever mm. interesting. Are you just going to take the empty spot, huh? So, well, I you're I gonna go you're going to kill them both. You sick? You I leave sick them all on red. <laughs> oh my no. god! Now, road trip has to be Patty Mills. I think, you know, he we he again a horse from Zelda. Like he he was. I think if they give him a, a, a much less taxing role, he'll be better. The thing is, though, he does love coffee. But you can have coffee on a road trip, so it's like basically the same thing. Not the way I drive. <laughs> I, can't, I mean, the problem is, no the you know, where, depending where we're driving, you know, there's a lot of ba bad coffee out there. He's a bit of a gourmand when it comes to coffee, I hear. But I got, I'm, I'm in the same order. Blake, Levon Red, LaMarcus, coffee, Patty, road trip. And it's funny that Blake's Levon Red because last year we were debating, debating Jeff Green and Blake Griffin. And I we're know. like, yeah, Blake. I yeah, know. let's take All right, that's All right, next one up. Yeah. Um, this is the Kyrie special. Ooh. Nets give him a full extension. Oh, wow. The Nets trade him. Or Kyrie just picks up his player option. What do you leave on red? That means you hate. What do you like and what do you love as an option? Do you want me to go first? Uh, sure, go ahead. Um. I actually hate trading him the most. Yeah, I think me too. I I will have coffee with full extension, and if they could just pick up the player option, how great would that be? Yeah. I'll go on a road trip with a player option. Come on. Yeah, that feels right. I mean, because that's uncomplicated. The trade is, is going to be a messy... <clears throat> you're, not getting any, you're not getting cool things back in that trade, unfortunately. It's going to be sad. Yeah. Speaking of... <laughs> Our sponsor. Guys who you could trade for Kyrie. Russell Westbrook. Oof. Oh, this is the road trip. Okay. Yeah. Kyle Lowry. <clears throat> oh, my God. Or Malcolm Brogdon and Miles Turner. Oof. Well, um, obviously, road trip with, you know, three guys, it's much better than just one-on-one -on -one, because when the conversation goes stale, you know, it's not as awkward. Um, yes. And also, Malcolm Brogdon's by far the most useful player out of those three at this point in his career. Um, well, you don't think so? Um. I very much am pro Kyle Lowry. What you go uh, just in a vacuum? You go Lowry over over Brogdon, Malcolm Brogdon, and yes, interesting. Because I think here's what I think. So here, just update people, our listeners. I know our listeners are very much we're in the Nets world. 
That's all we care about. We're not looking in our telescope at other constellations. No, we're here. We're here on Nets World. That's Always. what we care about. Okay. Myopic. Um, to a fault. It seems Pat Riley had some damaging quotes about Kyle Lowry and his weight. One, something I get behind. Being big. Um, You're not, this is, anyways, this, this body dysmorphia. This body dysmorphia. I've gained a lot of weight since last evening. Um, <laughs> Kyle Lowry is the prickliest of prickly pears. Mm-hmm. And it would be very Kyle Lowry to have gained weight in Miami, <laughs> not been fully, fully healthy after he got that big contract. Wow. They trade him to Brooklyn for Kyrie, and that pisses Kyle Lowry off. And he goes to Brooklyn. He's like, I'm going to. I'm going to win a championship. Yeah. I'm going to win another championship. I got KD. We're going to go down to Miami. We're going to rip out their throats. Yeah. Roadhouse. Roadhouse style. Um, so I do. So Westbrook, to me, is the least attractive of all these options. I, we agree. I right? think everybody agrees with that, yeah. Okay, so he can be left on red. So it's between Malcolm Brogdon and Miles Turner or Kyle Lowry. I, I just wow. think, like, so I like Brogdon and Turner. You don't like Miles Turner? No, I like them both plenty. I just think... If I'm going for a championship, I, I want a motivated Kyle Lowry, and I'm betting the fact that he is going to be a motivated Kyle Lowry if he comes to Brooklyn after being discarded by Miami. I don't. That this would be is, my bet. My issue with this is like my understanding of of Malcolm Brogdon is through, which is always the case, the prism of fantasy basketball, in which he is you know always outperforming his draft position in in my league. And I always snatch him up. Um, so I'm a Brogdon, I'm a Brogdon guy, um, and also a Miles Turner guy for similar reasons. I mean, he was far and away the best shot blocker, and uh, you know was one of the rare BLT kind of kind of bigs that actually matter fantasy wise. Um, so with that in mind, I'm very much you know prejudiced in favor of of those two. Plus, also, well, I was thinking about this because so. Miles Turner has this is for the road trip. You know, he's got long legs, but he also is pretty slender in the shoulder, Mike. And so if you had to sit next to him, um although that would be you wouldn't have to sit next to him because you'd be that would mean that two people were in the back seat and one person was driving. And that's not a road trip. That's a that's a chauffeur. Um so, so, <laughs> so, so, take, long range Uber. so take that out. Uh <laughs> personality wise, Westbrook on a road trip, is that really the worst thing in the world? Yes, I think that's the worst thing. <laughs> I'm, trying, I'm trying to think of what that would... I mean, he's very surly, you know? He's he's impatient, it seems like. Yeah, but I think he... If he's on a road trip with you and he wants to be... He's the type of person where if like he wants to open up in that way, it could, he may be a fun person. I wouldn't even know. I've never... What does he look like when he's fun? Like, I don't know if and I've seen this. Miles is very into Legos. And I don't want to get Legos all over my car. <laughs> You know, I don't. I don't want him stopping. Don't, I don't want to. You don't have the ability to tell Miles Turner to pick up his own Legos. You're going to be the guy. You're like, fine, I'll pick him up. You think he's going to leave his Legos around? You don't have kids. I do. Okay. 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 Well, this is. So you think I, I you think Miles Legos. Turner is playing with levels? At the, so I thought you were going to be like he's like building a Lego Death Star or something like an adult version of like you no, know, he's just like doing you know sandbox creative mode with like <laughs> <laughs> just making houses over and over I, again. Guarantee at least 12 different times during the road trip. Let's say we're driving from Brooklyn to Birmingham. Okay. Okay. He's going to want to stop and get out at a Lego store in Louisville. Yeah. And I'm, I'm, we're not going to Louisville. It's off. <laughs> it's off the route. Yeah. Louisville's a great town. I love I'm it. I'm sure see. it is, but it's, it's in 30 minutes off, 30 minutes on. It's an hour out of our way. This is the difference between me and you. Like I love a quest. If somebody's got a quest, I very rarely have my own quests. Oh, but if if somebody has, BS. oh, if someone's like, I got to go to this no. like video store in, sure. you know, <laughs> okay, yeah, no, you could say this for the podcast audience. I lived with you. There weren't many quests. We weren't going you, on quests. You didn't have quests. That's the problem. We were we. That's you, the problem. You, I don't have my own quest. That's what I'm saying. If somebody else has a quest, I like that. But I very oh. rarely have my own quests. You're you're. What's the what's a knight's like squire? You're a squire. Yeah, I'm an NPC in somebody else's <laughs> video game. <laughs> They're the main character, and I'm uh, a mercenary for hire. Uh, okay. So, anyways, no Legos. I got it. No Legos. Um, okay. I think we're on the same page, though. I mean, like, wait, did you wait? So, did you road trip with Brogdon and or you you road trip with Lowry? Yeah, that's insane. That's wild. Because I think ultimately, if I'm trying to win a championship, Kyle Lowry is the guy I want in my corner. Okay, a motivated Kyle Lowry. All right. I I still think there's like one more run in Kyle Lowry, 
And also, I would love the idea. I just this is like a side benefit of Kyrie and Heat culture. Mm -hmm. I don't think Kyrie plays a game from the Miami Heat if he if he gets traded to the Heat. Yeah, true. I think he rejects all of the stuff that they talk about. Yeah. So I would enjoy that. Next one up. I don't really know how to define this. Let's call these again. um, The grumpy, the grumpy men of Brooklyn. Okay. Or formerly so, Mm -hmm. James Harden, Ben Simmons, Kyrie Irving. This is. (laughs) <laughs> completely personality based. Yeah. This has nothing to do with basketball skill. This is who would you actually want to be leave on red, get yeah. a coffee with, and have a road trip with. Um if you don't pick James Harden for this, just because of <clears throat> like going back to the quests, the well, quests in that pick case for what? are to go on the road trip. Because the oh. qu- <laughs> because the quest is gonna be uh you know, which you know, food. Which, it's yeah. gonna be food, it's gonna be bars, it's gonna be the clubs. And those are fun quests for me. Uh, and like, I, you know, I can, I can have, you know, like debate, debate bro energy with people, you know, for a time, but being stuck in a car with somebody who just wants to like disagree with everything is that's, that would be tough. I think that would be tough. Ben Simmons gives me like that Gen Z, like I'm on my phone energy the whole time. So he, he might be out entirely. Yeah. He, Ben would be FaceTiming his fiance while I'm, while you are driving the car. And you have to just sit there silently while he has a 45-minute conversation about the clouds Yes, with his fiance and, on FaceTime. And he'll do the thing that I do, which is why I'm actually not great on road trips. You wouldn't want me there, is I get motion sickness. So I'll be like, we need to stop, and I need some... Uh, drama mean and and then Bro. i'm just and then i'm My just back. A, <laughs> I'm his just back a, i mean his back would be crushing back, backs are tough on road trips uh or road trips are tough on backs you know the whole deal so he'd be tough and that's no through no fault of his own you know i've been there yeah um uh, so he's definitely leave on red uh yeah so here's the thing Kyrie would be the perfect coffee a, cr- a great coffee because you that's the debate bro energy that right. you talk about Let's, like you know i would want to and i feel like that setting would be very i like, think just relax we just bring a new york post and start chopping it up you know let's just go <laughs> let's if you walked in with a new york post with Kyrie, he would lose. i'll bring like the, and i'll bring a daily don't worry i'll bring them both and we can i i will bring it'll be like you've got mail i'll bring a book with a rose i'll just be waiting for him uh, by the door have we talked about we've talked about how psychotic that movie is right that is the that is the most psychotic don't movie. You, don't don't do this. The, do that Tom Hanks is lying to this poor woman for like mo- maybe a year, months. It works out, <laughs> Brian. It's, it's and, the journey they and had to go on, and she's charmed by it. Like if the, in real life, if she found out it was him, like the the dread and panic that would. <laughs> She always knew it was him. Yeah. She just couldn't she, face the facts. She, the, she sees him turning the bend with that dog, and she goes 180 degrees and starts running at full speed, Mike. That's what happens if she finds out that somebody's been having a been cat. She's been catfished at that point for months. Don't don't ruin one of the greatest movies of our time. Here's the funny: I wish they made a sequel just so that Dave Chappelle would have to still be. The, I know, the like. Friend. <laughs> How That's wild, super likely friendship. They pick Dave yeah. Chappelle as Tom Hanks's buddy. Yeah, they got a lot in common. Uh, yeah, because Kyrie's a perfect coffee. Perfect coffee. Yeah, you know, I want to talk to Kyrie. I mean, come on the I, podcast. I, I literally want to get coffee. Let's go. Yeah, let's yeah. get. Open we don't invitation. have to do it on the podcast, but yeah. let's do it on the podcast. All right. Um, next up, this is the coach's corner. Oh God. Steve Nash, Coach K, and Quinn Snyder. Uh, let's just do personality. Okay. Just personality. Just personality. This is like Mike's. These are tough, actually, because like Steve Nash oh, seems okay. seems great, but he's, he's he also seems very quiet and and pre- I don't know Quinn Snyder's personality. He just seems like a like boom he, sort I, of boomer Gen X dad kind of energy. You know. I have no clue. Yeah, I have no. Clue he agrees. They, he slicks back his hair, which is for me. It's that's pretty much all you need to know. Like you're not going to be talking much on that. So. Guy. I live with my father-in-law, so Coach K is a leave on red for me. That's big father-in-law energy. Okay. I don't really need, like, I live, I love my father-in-law, but, like, you know, I don't need to go on a road trip. You you leave your father-in-law on red? He texts you, he's like, Mike, I, I need to speak with you. And you're like, <laughs> Mike, I'm on the floor. <laughs> Mike, <laughs> I, I slipped. Michael, this <laughs> is, a, there's a family emergency. Please respond. <laughs> Turn off notifications. New phone, who dis? Yeah. Um, I do do that. Yeah, Yeah, I do that. He doesn't get it. Um, I guess Steve Nash's road trip. Steve Nash seems, 
you have to be a really good person to be able to handle all the BS that he has, and no one seemed to hate you for it. Yeah. You know? Um, he could bring some delicious, healthy snacks. Yeah. You know, yeah. and Qu- Quinn Snyder. It is. A, it is. It f- it'll feel like it'll be good for me at the end of it. You know, it'll be one of those road trips where I learn a little bit about myself. You know, it's not. It's not the hard Personal road trip quest. where by the end of it, you know, I'm, I'm rolling into town. You know, light light pockets. You know, feeling like I've got some regrets after a Steve Nash road trip. Um, you know, I'm feeling good. I think about myself. I've, I've discovered new things. Let's do a classic Nets. This is a bonus. Oh, bonus! Bonus mean. Jason Kidd, Kenny Martin, or Richard Jefferson. Oh, you got to go with Richard Jefferson. I mean, I love Kenyon yeah. Martin, but I does mean, he literally have a podcast called Road Tripping? And no disrespect, I mean, I like Jason Kidd the player, but I don't want to be anywhere in a car near with him. Let's just, <laughs> yeah. Leave I mean, there. we're not making jokes. We're just saying let's. Yeah. We don't. <laughs> we're not making jokes. Okay. Be serious, Brian. I started off good, and now <laughs> Kenyon Martin. Me, so. I yeah. loved it. I guess. Well, okay. Who would you rather have coffee with, Kenyon Martin or Jason Kidd? Oh, it's a good one. Um, I mean, I just think Kenyon Martin just because I, yeah, I yeah. stand. You know, okay, do this. Close your eyes. Mm-hmm. Close your eyes. You're walking into your favorite coffee shop in Brooklyn. Mm. At the table is either Kenyon Martin or Jason Kidd. Who are you most excited to see? You know, the thing is, it's like it is going to be Kenyon Martin. And now that I actually think about it, because like with <clears throat> if Jason Kidd's piercing gaze hits me like I, I don't. I just don't know. I don't know anything. He is a an enigma, you know. I know that like I, I pretty much know what I'm going to get with a Kenyon Martin sit down. It's going to be quick. He's got you know places got to a be. A couple of war stories. And- <laughs> yeah, right. With Jason Kidd, um, you know, I don't. I, I feel it's like going to be antagonistic like, to you. Yeah, well, player. I don't know. It's exactly. It could be. It's like talking to you know Hannibal Lecter or something. You know, I don't know how deep he's going to probe <laughs> into my brain. <laughs> To me, I'd pick Jason Kidd just for because there's the entryway joke, the the icebreaker of like, "Hey, Jason, don't spill that drink," you know, like, uh, you know how he spilled the soda. And you want to do, and then after that, then you think that that's <laughs> that's a nice a, conversation. That's enough to propel. Um, he doesn't. And the, the problem with Jason would, Kidd is that he doesn't get that, and if he does get it, he'll he'll not like it. That's the that's my <laughs> stand up and flip the table. <laughs> yeah. um, um, good memes, Mike. That was good. I good mean, episode. we didn't highlight enough how, how fun Richard Jefferson is, but um, everyone knows that. Yeah, well, he's been on the show. He was great. Um, I've texted it a couple times. He's left me on red. Ah, he left you on I mean, I've, I, he's responded back. And me. it comes full circle. Yes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <Wait>. <laughs> I'm trying to think of who you could put me in with. Yeah. Like, where would I be? Brian doesn't leave me on red. We don't text though. That's kind of the, the key part of our relationship. I have a I have a pretty I have a weirdly strict like I don't really respond to texts policy. It's tough for me. I've understood it for years. <laughs> yeah, it's. But you're a great great on a phone call. Hey. I love. I just like phone calls. I like them so much more. You know, <laughs> bang it all out all in one sitting. I've made time for to take you all in all at once. I'm not like uh, excuse me, hang on, I get it. You know. Anyway, so I'm not gonna Except get one. you. Well, you do talk the whole time when you're making soup. Usually, yeah, I often, soup is being made. I'm often, or I'll do, be doing dishes and stuff. And yeah, you can multitask that way. Anyways. I think that's nice. Can't say enough good things about phone calls. <laughs> I'm huge, huge on them. <laughs> phone calls, text messages, or DMs. Yeah. Oh, wow. MF kill. I mean, text messages All right. are done. Um, well, that was it. That was so great. What an episode. We're going to keep... I mean, Kyrie's going to have to decide in two weeks whether he's yeah, going to have some real content. We're going to have some content soon, so... Um, not that that wasn't great content. Don't get me wrong, but we're going to have real news coming up soon. And we don't have to do a draft show this year. Great. Because I'll save we'll those have, I'll those terrible takes. I can put them. People do did do a show if they pe- make a second round. Somebody pick. in the Discord, shout out to the Discord, did did say we should do one where what we would have done had we had that pick. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah. Which don't, don't tempt me with a yeah, good time. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. that's what's good about that is that you just can do the most outlandish yeah. layer takes. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you're really good at scouting um, on YouTube. Oh, you've always appreciate been, that. You always pull out some gems. I just I just know how to work the YouTube algorithm. You know, I know how to go deep down those those the thumbnails. I know how to. I can tell right away by just looking at a thumbnail whether it's going to be <laughs> a video worth watching. Anyways, Mike, great hey, show. Find us on Twitter yeah. at pkglueguysnetsdaily.com, the athletic, and. Um, Thank you so much. Five for stars. Us. We want them. We need them. Gotta have them. Okay, bye everybody. Bye bye bye. Pew, pew, pew.